Um, it's nice to be thinking on such a delightful session. It's been such a, a happy afternoon. It reminds me of what archaeology is all about. It's lovely. Uh, it's nice to be able to present something in front of a green mound, having had uh, yeah, a Japanese mine and all sorts of lovely things. It's been great. Um, so I thought I'd just talk uh, a little bit about a piece of work which I've got in the exhibition, I think, that's out in the corridor. Um, and uh, this is part of a whole set of screen prints that I worked on uh, a few years ago. Um, I became really attracted to screen printing because it was almost the opposite of archaeology. In archaeology, we peel away layers, and a bit like Louise's talk, you know, you start to go down through the different layers and through the different understandings, and then you get to understand the landscape much better. But with screen printing, it's a whole series of putting those layers back. And in a way, you have to understand what you're trying to make before you start putting them back as well. And so the whole process of screen printing for me was a way of thinking through archaeology. Uh, not just that, but screen printing, which, I don't know, for those of you who make, you'll know that when you're making something, there's a certain, the conscious side of your brain shuts off and something else takes over. And while I was happily screen printing and just merrily letting the hours slip by while I thought about different shades of green, my the kind of little unconscious side of my brain would imagine myself back into holes and I'd start to think about archaeology and the way we are in the landscape and things. So as a process, I just found it really, really lovely. And then when I was out doing archaeology and I was down a hole, I'd find myself a little <laughs> other side of my brain thinking out about um, uh, screen printing and, yeah, nice bits of artwork that I could make. Um, so this particular piece is based on a piece of rock art, uh, Copt How in Cumbria, if any of you know it. And it's actually on a really big uh, sort of side of a massive, uh, I don't know what you call it, rock outcrop. <laughs> uh, and actually, in reality, it's the other, other way around. I'll take a picture in a minute. Um, and I became really fascinated with the whole idea of scale and how with screen printing, you uh, make a print, you've got the idea that when you transform the colour of things and take them out of context, the scale becomes uh, sort of uh, up for grabs. So as soon as I started making this print, I realised that it actually reminded me of an aerial photograph. Um, and uh, that this was sort of like a trapway going up through it, and there were barrows and different areas like that. So uh, it gave me that idea. And then when other people started looking at it, they said, oh, it's like cells. It's like looking through a microscope. And, different cells and things like that. So I love the idea that the screen print from being this rock face in Cumbria could actually be anything. And I really like, uh, a bit like uh, Francis was saying, in a way it's nice just to let people look and not explain it um, and just hear what lovely things they come up with uh, about it. Uh, and this is another one that I did, um, which is based on a, an aerial photograph. Um, and there's a cat really running up through and lots of arrows. And again, uh, I've had a very happy time thinking about the different marks that things make in the landscape and how those translate. And this one particularly, people used to think was uh, something cellular. Um, and then this one's based on a site I worked at called Swing in the Yorkshire Wolds. Uh, and I worked there for about uh, five or six years. And it was based partly on aerial uh, photographic plots and things, but also on little things that I noticed while I was out in the field. So the bottom bit is um, all the plough fields you get and those lovely plough marks, especially on the Yorkshire Wolds, you can sort of see them across huge distances and they create these lovely textures. And uh, other bits were bits of barrow, and then the little speckled bit in the middle is sort of the idea of uh, all the uh, fields of corn that you get up there catching the light. So with the screen print, you've got that lovely opportunity just to yeah, take things and put them in as you, as you like. Um, this is the actual uh, piece of rock art that I took the original screen print from. And I thought I'd also just say a little bit about the whole idea of inscribing into stone. Because um, that's the thing that I've been working on most recently is our relationship with stone. Um, and I'm fascinated with how people make marks. So I've been learning how to do uh, stone masonry and so lettering, and this is a piece I made with uh, Gary Breeze, who was artist in residence here, who made the lovely big standing stone in the reception to archaeology. Um, and this is a piece of pond free stone from the Isle of Purbeck in Dorset. And uh, there's something about stone where you can look at it and you can appreciate it. When you start chiselling into it, 
you get a whole new understanding of the stone and you break through the surface and with the pond free stone you get this lovely polished shine to it but as soon as you break through it's this very very fine eulitic limestone so the chisel just runs through it and then with other stones uh, like granites I've tried doing that that's an absolute bugger. <laughs> and you're lucky if you can make a mark at all. So um, that cliff up in uh, the Lake District, I think that probably would have been much harder work than this was. And um, I just love the really, uh, I don't know, the lovely marks that you can make with stone. This is um, a plaque that uh, Mark Hayson, who works at the quarry that I worked with in my PhD, he was remaking really a plaque for a tunnel that collapsed. And I love the fact that the letters uh, themselves become art and that actually a lot of the time when you're working in stone it's the stone around the mark that you make that becomes the artwork um, so yeah that one piece of uh, rock art from the main district has sort of spanned off into lots of different areas of uh, intrigue but yes it's very nice to be able to work with lovely, lovely materials and think of archaeology in interesting ways so yeah that's me done <laughs>